Old people in the house unite. It is the new year. Welcome to 2023. Tabletop Tuesday is still in fashion. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Good grief. Welcome, old man Dan. Another year older, another year wiser. Another no wiser. year in, in the back, back rearview mirror, backup camera. It's all happening. How are you? How are you on this fine 2023? Whatever day it is, I'm doing well. Excellent. Excellent. That's really great to hear. That's really <laughs> great to hear. Yeah. Had a had a nice quiet Christmas and surrounding activities adjacent thereto. Oh, well that's very nice. That is <laughs> very descriptive and not at all vague. Excellent. Good to hear. <laughs> you don't need to know. I don't. No, it's I don't. none of your business. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Sure. Yeah. Um, What's up uh, with you? I, yeah, yeah, about the same. <laughs> okay. Actually, we had a really, really, really relaxing Christmas. You survived Ice Apocalypse. We did survive Ice Apocalypse 2022. And, uh, and was we only it... had to use one one cord of wood. We didn't have to use uh, all the firewood we got. Okay. And so we it... used that for ambiance and not out of necessity. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Did you it... sit next to the fire and read a book with a cup of hot cocoa? We sat next to the fire and like watched, the olden days. watched movies, um, watched holiday movies. Uh, with alcohol. Okay. Yeah. And it was really nice. Our friend made a large batch of holiday Manhattans and put it in a carafe for us and delivered them. Oh. And, uh, wow. They what are... makes it a holiday Manhattan? <laughs> they were a present. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a traditional oh. Manhattan. But oh, okay. it's a large batch, so it comes in a big carafe. And um, they are fantastic to the point where i considered having one or two when we did the show today however uh due to the advice of a good friend and uh uh also the fact that they are um they sneak up on you they're like an alcohol assassin you're yeah. doing fine <laughs> you're walking along you're doing your thing next thing you know pow, it gets you and uh uh, the last two times that I've indulged, I have, I have gotten very drunk, very, Good. very drunk, even eating, like having a loaf of bread beforehand, uh, and, um, you know, like putting a charcoal filter in my liver, like it just, they are, they are hardcore. They are hardcore. Well, have one after we wrap today as your, your celebratory gift to yourself yeah your reward i think that's not a bad idea because they are really 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 good and then she okay. also got some artisanal maraschino cherries so instead of the normal maraschino cherries that you buy at uh, at the store which contain just a very small amount of formaldehyde um they they are they taste almost like if black cherry soda wasn't unnatural if that makes sense, they're really, really good. They're super sweet and really decadent. They're so they're like, all natural, but they taste like an unnatural flavoring. But that makes in a, a lot of but sense. But in, in a good way, I guess <laughs> is the best way to put it. They just, okay. they just, they just taste really good. So yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of drinks, what are you drinking today? I'm just having another Guinness. I've got this is the the penultimate one of the the case that I've got. So I don't. I don't have anything else. There's nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, a Guinness again. It's still winter time, still a fine winter drink. But unfortunately, I will be showing you up this week because yes, please do. When what I do went have? to the beer store, I got awesome sauce hazy IPA. Wonderful from Ascendant Brewery. Okay, uh, it has a fun story 
So I am going to read that from you on the back. But before I do that, this was a bronze winner from the Oregon Beer Awards uh, 2022. So it is a metal. It's a it's a metal holder as far okay. as beers go. Craft brewed in Portland, Oregon, Ascendant Beer Company is proud to call itself an old town brewery and tap room. There may be more architectural firms than blacksmiths in the neighborhood now, but Old Town retains its flannel-clad identity. Indeed, <laughs> with the open brewery in the back room, Ascendant has helped restore a bit of the steam and fire of the old city. This is no push-button brew house. Ascendant is a working man's brewery. And then, in particular, with Awesome Sauce, Awesome Sauce Hazy in India Pale Ale, our love of small batch and handcrafted brews shines through in this delightfully hazy IPA. Brewed with oats for a smooth and creamy body, the fun starts once the hop bags are torn open. The amazing tangerine and grapefruit juiciness comes through our copious additions of mosaic, Simcoe, and Azaka hops late in the kettle and in the fermentation. Fermentation. That dirt Easy word didn't to want say. to come out. Yeah. After tasting this, you will be saying, "This is some awesome sauce." Let's try well, some awesome sauce. Let's find out. Let's find out if that is false marketing that you can then uh, issue a lawsuit for. I will be drinking this out of my uh, Powell's uh, Powell's Books Northwest uh -huh. Reader pint glass. Yep. Keeping it all in the city tonight. Yeah. Supporting all of your local biznai. Gonna take a second to pour. Oh, that's a that's a nice head. It's too bad what you're not doing this on beer. camera, so anybody can actually see. I don't want to spill. Well, that's why fault. you got to practice. I also don't want to show off the fact that that is uh, way too much head <laughs> that you poured terribly. Am I a professional beer pourer? No. No. <laughs> uh, was I a licensed bartender for when many you were... years? I was. You were, yes. were you? It was. Uh, you actually went to school for it, didn't you? I did. I did. I got a, a piece of paper with my name on it and everything. And then uh, when I went and got my first job at a hotel uh, lobby bar, uh -huh. that very afternoon, I got the call to work on Pearl Harbor and uh, had to quit. Same day. So your bartending career exact lasted exactly one afternoon. Almost. Not I even a full do, shift. I, I did a couple private events after that. That that doesn't that's not a good story though. It is not. That's not a good story. It is not. You ruined it. It is not. When you have the option to print the truth or the legend, print the legend. I should know better. Man. I should know better. Yeah. Uh well, this head is taking a minute to go down, so I'm just gonna see how the head tastes. That's uh Wow. Uh, Even the head is good. <laughs> well, that's impressive. Curtis, working blue today. <laughs> Jeez. Filthy. Did you get the whole can into that one glass? or I will be able to, but not, not just yet. they got to wait for that head to go down. Uh, it is delightful. All of okay. the notes that they mention on the back of the can hit home that is normally i don't like a hazy ipa i just thought awesome sauce was a good name okay but uh their their story rings true i am saying that is some awesome sauce disgraceful i can't believe you you plunged to those depths how much are they paying you did you get that can for free? This week is sponsored by Ascendant Brewing. <laughs> That's just a joke. That's a it's joke. Really not. That is not That's true. Really not. That is not true. That sponsored is not true. by. However, <laughs> we will uh, we will accept sponsorships uh, at any time. Just well, uh, go ahead and reach out. Let's let's talk about that. We will not, review not gonna, sponsorships do... <laughs> at any time. <laughs> we will accept submission of <laughs> sponsorship. <laughs> Uh, how hoppy is it? Did you did you tell uh, us what the IBU score was? You know, I don't see the or IBUs actually rating. listed handily, um, except uh, on the front. I, I saw on the, the front thing. there was alcohol and IBU listed under the label. 6.1% alcohol by volume and 42 IBU. That's not, that's not very hoppy. 
It's not very hoppy, but it's think. uh it's hoppy enough. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So Good uh, job, Ascendant. Yeah, it's quite nice. Uh I'm kind of surprised. I wonder what else was in competition with it that it only won bronze, because this is a very tasty beer. Mm. Well, you need to go back to your bottle shop and hunt down the silver and gold medal recipients of that yeah, I particular think so. contest. What was it? Oregon? Uh, was the, the Oregon Beer Festival. Okay. Yeah. Which is a very big beer festival. In Oregon. Indeed. As far as festivals of beer go. Yeah. Very big. All right. Indeed. Yeah. Successful choice. Good job, Curtis. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dan, as you're aware, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks is the fact that I have been trying to find a time to be able to play a game of 40K with yeah. my buddy and old neighbor, Joel. Mm-hmm. It happened yesterday. Nice. It happened yesterday. And so even before we get into our weekly progress, I have a slideshow. Okay. Welcome to a Ooh. battlefield in the Octarius system. Very nice. So, because we like to play the narrative here... Wait a minute. Octarius? Yeah. This wasn't a kill team fight, though. No. This was a game of 40k, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, you know, the war in Octarius is fought between the Imperium, the Tyranids, and the Orcs primarily. Okay. But... uh a lot of other other factions have gotten involved. Um, and because the Tyranids have entered the system and kind of gone crazy, since they've got so much biomass to be able to create new things, gene stealer cults have risen to take over their planets and, uh, and uh, prepare the planets for, uh, for consumption. And so here we are with... Uh, uh, a gene stealer cult army coming for the Astra Militarum that are here. I was the Astra Militarum. Uh, Joel was playing his gene stealer cult oh, with okay. gene stealer cult uh, Imperial Guard um, uh, allies. So over on this side of the board is my stuff, which is only 50% painted, and it's really obvious when you see it on a board like this. Right. And then over <laughs> here is uh, is Joel's uh, Gene Stealer Cult. You can okay. see he's got two Death Strike missile launchers. Mm-hmm. That's going to become important later. Well, I mean, one of them's facing the wrong way, and the other one's facing directly into a building, so I think you're safe. <sighs> You'd think. I was not. I oh. was not. Oh, that's, that's um, a shame. We had a problem with uh, timing yesterday, uh, uh, and so we weren't able to play a complete game, but there's a fun narrative that goes along with this. So, on the planet that we are on, um, the Gene Stealer cult rises and kind of catches the Imperium that's, that's stationed on that planet off guard. So, Colonel Van Leeuwen, my guy, uh, rallies his forces gets everybody together and they turn on the gene stealer cult uh uh infected astro militarum members and try to put them down as quick as possible but those gene stealer cultists manage to grab two death strike missiles and they're going to use them so we got we got uh we got started and this was after the first couple moves of the game. Uh, there's a closer look at his Death Strike missile. I'll let Very you know nice. that the way the Death Strike missile works now, they use it, they're used a little bit like a deterrent in the game. Um, you place a marker on your turn and declare which kind of missile it's going to be. He was using plasma missiles for this game. And they make a big circle of mortal wounds. Just a shit ton of mortal wounds. <laughs> and the goal is people aren't going to want to be there when the missile goes off, so you want to move your things. Well, Colonel Van Leeuwen, being a uh, leader of the Leftovers, is a big proponent 
of the Imperium's idea that humans are replaceable and meat for the meat grinder is a viable option. Dan, did, 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 my, did my troops move when the missile was put in place? The answer is no. I would say yes. I if, did not. If you were... I mean, they attention. moved as they were flown through the sky <laughs> after the explosion. Did you we'll forget? Get that. That? Oh, no. No, no, no. It was tactical. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, this is just a close-up of some of his uh, Death Corps of Krieg. I apologize that I the... Like, uh, I like his paint job. Yeah. They're pretty cool looking. That um, is similar to what I was thinking of doing, but I'm not going to do that now because his look really good and mine won't. These pictures are a little blurry because yes. uh, it was wartime and, uh, you know, you're running a gun in photography. Yeah, and, yeah you know, it, that's tough to do. I mean, it's tough to do. Yeah. Here are some, this is even really out of focus, but these were his jackals. That was Adeline. as the Death Strike missile was impacting the ground. <laughs> it it, someone tried to take up. a picture. <laughs> these these look better than the blur. It uh, <laughs> gives you the idea of. Uh, this is my Hellhound, which d almost took out an entire squad of Gene Stealers. Wow. Hellhound is a great vehicle. I love is, Hellhounds. I need more. Is Mortis a transfer or did you actually do a really good job of free painting that text i'm not that good that is a transfer okay that is a transfer yeah i i uh i'm a big big fan big fan of the transfers especially when it comes to stuff like that because i do look like a four-year-old when i try to uh when i try to free free write on yeah. stuff right and and here are my Bulgrins, uh, my Bulgan proxies, because mm. uh, they, as you can see, they are not painted. I did not complete them. Um, and their shields aren't on their arms because uh, uh, because they are on painting stands right now being painted. So, yeah. But the neat thing was the Bulgrins ended up being so scary in the center of the board that they saw no action. <laughs> they just held that, uh, they held that, <laughs> that setter objective the entire game. They were just intimidating and nobody approached them. Now, if we could have gotten a little bit further in, I think he was setting up a couple different units to come take them out because they are very, very, very stubborn once they get landed somewhere. Okay. And I had them with a, uh, uh, commissar. So they were going to, yeah. they were going to be, they were going to be pretty hard to move. But um, but never happened. So right now they've got a perfect record. Uh, here is my command squad holding another uh, backfield backfield uh, uh, objective. Really didn't get a chance to use them to their full power. I had forgotten how much I had forgotten about how to play 40k. Because I've been so <laughs> sunk into Kill Team, because I've been rereading GURPS. Just, yeah. I feel like after 40, your brain can only hold so many game system rules at a time. Yeah. yeah. And so I remembered the basics of 40K, like the core rules and stuff like that. I forgot what just about every one of my units did, though. So I missed out on. I forgot to do orders sometimes. I forgot to do psychic powers sometimes. Mm. It's a miracle I did as well as I did, frankly. <laughs> but as you can see, the gate crashers made their uh, made their appearance. Okay, they were traveling in this chimera, and uh, they got set up to take on the patriarch of the gene stealers. But uh, uh, something I'll describe in a minute came by and forced everyone to retreat. Um. There's the Patriarch. Ooh. There's another squad of Gene Stealers. Like, all this stuff was coming to these guys right here. They were coming for my tank commander. They were coming for my burners. They were coming coming for everything. And they had done some pretty bad work on, on that Chimera. Uh, and then, yeah, that's just another close-up of, of the, uh, ab of the uh, uh, hybrids. I like the thorny vine arms or appendages on yeah. those gene stealers. Those are neat yeah. looking. Yeah, I want to say that they're they're actually called thorn whips, but I forget. It was so mad dash. We only had two hours to play, and that's possible if you both know your game really well. Yeah. 
and not if one of you hasn't played for mm -hmm. two years. A little bit closer look at the patriarch. It's not a great picture of his head. It was very dark. <laughs> These are the gene stealers that I killed. I, he's a. Uh, I, I like his. I like his paint um, style, though, and his bases look great. Yeah. Also. Yeah, he's got he he likes to do them fast so that he can play with them super quick. Yeah. Uh but he's taking he's doing uh a a zinch greater demon right now and he's taking his time and he's like, "Uh, it's taking forever. Just want to get it done." Tell me about the bases to the bases, the, the little blue tabs underneath those gene stealers. What is that? That's a squad marking uh from a third party dealer. Okay. And so that way he can all tell right. the difference it, with all of his gene stealers painted the same. He can tell which ones are part of which squad. Got it. They also make nameplates. And for Kill Team, when it used to be the 2018 version, they would have like uh, little rings that you could put around the base to show their specialty if they had one. Oh, neat. Here's another shot at uh, at the uh, Gate Crashers uh, uh, Chimera. Mm-hmm. This had a lot of whiff on it, actually. Uh, <laughs> the heavy flamer That's did really well, <laughs> but uh, but the the multi laser just doesn't work the way it used to. Multi lasers and assault cannons used to be so strong. the The power creep on the new armies is just. I'm playing with with the eighth edition codex. It was it was a this this game was like a farewell. Uh, game to to that codex and man oh man everything is just so much different now it's i was really really playing the underdog here i like the collar on the heavy flamer oh that what i'm assuming is some kind of a a rubber or canvas or Probably treated canvas, <laughs> right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Collar, red collar uh, that attaches it to the to the tank and kind of protects that that portal, so the gunner within is not exposed. It it is exactly, and it uh, also that piece is also there for the heavy bolter option as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, here's the gate crashers. It was so good just to get them out on the field at all with their special weapon guys. So we've got, we've got uh, Thud, made his table debut. All right, and then uh, Howlin' Mad, uh, the plasma gunner, got out front. Got my regular flamer. Got my heavy flamer in the back. Uh, and originally, when I made this army, this chimera was supposed to be for a squad of. Uh, a squad of uh, stormtroopers. And so they've got the dragoon uh, marking on the side of the, of the uh, chimera. However, apparently that's not an option anymore. So yeah, maybe I'll come back. I don't know. Once they got their own transport in the, uh, uh, starts with a T. I forgot what it's called. I'm not going to look it up. Not right this minute. But uh, when they got their own, uh, uh, when they got their own uh, uh, transport, apparently they weren't allowed to take chimeras anymore. So that's good times. Another shot of the jackals. Oh, my uh, my other stormtroopers and jetpacks. Yeah, yeah. So these were uh, Elysian drop troops that used to be sold by Forge World. And I just oh. thought they were cool. Um, but uh, uh, they don't sell them anymore. And so I upgraded them to being uh, Tempesta Scions. And so I always keep them in reserve. And then I drop them uh, second or third turn okay. somewhere where it's important. So they came in and picked up this uh, objective. Nice. Another shot of the unfinished uh, uh, hoo and whatnots. Those are neat looking motorcycles. They're really cool. They're are, are really those cool. official? Yeah. 
Yeah, these are these Gene Steeler Cult has a great range right now. Has a great wow. range right now. Those are really neat looking. And yeah. did I see the one of them's popping a wheelie? Is that the way that one's modeled, or did uh-huh. he do that? Did he do that himself? You can make more than that do that, but that one in particular, yes, that one does a does a wheelie. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. And then uh, uh, wanted to get my psyker in there just a little bit better. So that's he actually did some really good work, but uh, uh, needed. To, just just needed more more movement needed more mobility so as i'm looking at what what the next uh, version of this guard army looks like i need i need more mobility all across the board i like the the color scheme you've got there with the commissar the psyker and the, your standard bearer in the back with those bright red coats and the gold trim yeah everybody's so uh uh, technically this is the Lord Commissar model, but I just, he matches what the basis of my, cause I used to use the Mordians as a lot of my officer class back in, back in the day. Mm-hmm. So this model matched the old model I had for, for Colonel Van Leeuwen. And, uh, so this is, this is my Colonel. And then. The rest of his command squad are all in standard fatigues. The only mark that shows their command squad is their black command badge, but also the fact that they've got gold markings on their uh, equipment. Everybody else has silver. But we've got one dude, the flag bearer. He's actually in full military dress. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just like you said. So, yeah. But that's it. There we go. That that was the game. Uh, uh, unfortunately, cool. a a gathering of magic swept through the battlefield, and everyone was forced to retreat before we could really finish the game. Oh, that's a shame. I hate yeah. it when that happens. Yeah. Well, we knew we had until four before the magic uh, commander tournament started, and unfortunately, oh. uh, Joel, the weather was awful. And yes. Joel was delayed in getting there. It took mm-hmm. him two hours to get there. So we were supposed to start at noon, and we started oh. a little after two. Oh, no. So you should have had four hours to, to play. Yeah. You would have gotten a whole game in there. Oh, my God. Two yeah. hours. Jeez. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like L.A. on a good day. There were complications. It wasn't just the traffic, but the wind got up to 30-mile-an-hour uh, gusts yesterday. and uh, And it was very wet. It was very, very wet. There was yeah. a lot of rain. We got something like five inches in in uh, in just a few hours. Wow. So yeah, it was a lot of rain. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We got we got a little bit of rain yesterday, but not nearly. I mean, you much. got California. You got California rain. Yeah. Yeah. I got Pacific it was Northwest rain. It was great. Yeah. yeah. All of us uh, went out and stood outside and it looked up and went, "We need this. We need this." And then we went back inside. Nice. That's what we do with rain. <laughs> Speaking of rain, we should find out about our weekly progress. No games for old that segue confused me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why I used it. It's because rain and weather definitely got in the way of my progress this week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, the bigger part of that was was my brain's complete and total holiday shutdown Mm -hmm. and deciding that it was time for food and booze and fires and holiday movies. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Johnson's glass onion, which we really enjoyed. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, And, uh, and so I, I, I don't think brush went to fig at all, Mm. but I do have progress to show. How? Slideshow number two. <laughs> so I did finish Stud. Okay. Was I he did finish was him. he on the field yesterday? He was not. Oh. He is on a box waiting to get varnished. Okay. So as I've gotten a little bit more experimental with what it means to customize for my kill teams, mm-hmm. I started to come up with a whole different like badge thing for especially for the uh uh for the gate crashers because of this armor it just gives a lot of options 
So here we can see that uh, he's got a lightning, uh, lightning campaign badge similar to what Snake Eyes has. Not similar. It's the exact same. It's off the same transfer sheet. And it's because they were in a, uh, they were in a, a like Brits, Blitzkrieg style war on another planet before they got reintegrated with the leftovers. Uh, and then it needed something else. It needed something to kind of, some of these guys don't really look that different. So they needed something. So I came up with the idea to use an old second edition Blood Angels assault transfer. So this was to be, this would have been used on old Blood Angels bikes. And uh, it, in my narrative, is a badge that shows that they completed recon school. So he's All got, right. he's got his recon badge. He is, he is a, he is a scout, somebody who can get ahead and check things out. Okay. In addition to his normal uh, skull squad marking and his uh, uh, spade uh, uh, squad marking. And of course, his chest color is the red company color because they work for the whole company, not a particular platoon. Whole lot, whole lot going on. Whole lot of record keeping. Uh, here it is from the side. And from the back. I ended company up not doing much more with this. It's just, it's just the, uh, it's just the bullet, bullet hit. Okay. And from this angle, and a little closer look at that recon badge, uh, because of the uh, uh, solvent and set material I use, this really tapped down to the armor. It looks painted on. It's really difficult to tell here because the shine comes off the the decal, mm -hmm. but um, but it does. It it. I was really shocked at how much this pressed in to the plastic. And that's just a closer look at that. It's it's a, it's a neat lightning bolt. Kind of like the fashion of that. Yeah, where's that from? You said. Uh, it is a from another transfer sheet. It's another assault Marines uh, decal okay. that isn't used anymore, and okay. I have a whole ton of them because I bought that army box, and it just came with every every box of every box of Marines came with multiple decal sheets because you'd get Ultramarines, Blood Angels. Dark Angels, Space Wolves, with every single kit. So wow. I've just got a bunch. I actually gave away a ton of transfers years and years and years ago, especially to Space Wolf players, because they just had so many, so many. And uh, uh, I still have nice. a box of transfers. So, yeah, it's kind of neat to just go through them and just be like, what, what can I yeah. do with this? Find some that are older and, uh, and put them to use. Yeah. That's cool. That's neat. Yeah. yeah. How'd you do? I know you've set a pretty good goal for yourself with uh, trying to get those three that were featured on screen last week completed. No, didn't make it. I didn't make it. I did put put brush to mini a bit, but I didn't get nearly as far as I had wanted to. The The event of Christmas and activities surrounding really occupied a lot of my attention so i didn't really do much that and the the continuing issue of being able to see um yeah didn't uh didn't get as far as i wanted really want to invest in that magnifier i'm i'm looking into it yeah, yeah. now that now that the holidays are over and uh i can look into that with greater attention understood understood or at least yeah. go to Rite Aid and get some readers you know? <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe. <laughs> no i nice. think the magnifier would be a good choice dude it has saved uh, my eyeballs Mag so Wamp. much you know like admittedly i got laser eye surgery back in my early 20s but it's been 20 something years and I still see very well. And I think a lot of that is because I don't put too much pressure on it as I'm pointing to a lamp that you can't see. Because I use my lamp to yeah. uh, be able to uh, see. 
And honestly, that that engineering lamp has been a godsend. I've had it since 1998, 1999. Oh, so you... Okay. Yeah, it really puts some miles on it. And How you ta- often if you do you take have to change the bulb? I haven't yet. What? Yeah, I haven't had That's to change it That's been the same yet. bulb for... Yeah. 15 years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a little older than that. It's at least 22 years old. Yeah. yeah. Math. Yeah, that's all right. Math is hard. So, yeah, if uh, especially, I don't even know if they make this kind of lamp anymore. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it's it came with a daylight fluorescent bulb. And it's been working out real well. Good. It's working out real well. So, yeah, highly recommend. Highly recommend. I I know Amazon's got some that are similar to that that are less than 40 bucks. So, yeah, that that's the nice worth, thing. Worth the expense. I paid 100 bucks for that back in the 90s. And now the same lamp goes for like thirty nine ninety five. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's... That's this week's progress. Mm, such as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, though. We, you know, the holidays got in the way. I, I, I you know, it's yeah. the end of the year. It's just like you know that week between Christmas and New Year's is such a worthless week. Such a worthless week. I remember it not being that way before. I remember, and this was because of what I was trying to do, like especially when I was independently producing this week, that, that week between was always like, this is when we do all the work that we couldn't do the rest of the year because there were too many other demands on our time. And, uh, this time around it was, I'm just going to curl up in a blanket and you're not going to see me for five days. It's going to be fine. It's been wild. And the days go so fast. Mm. <laughs> so fast. Wow, I've had all, I feel like I've had all kinds of stuff to do. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that is that is uh, that is both a blessing and a curse. The YouTube doesn't quit. It does not. It does not. <laughs> Spe- speaking of the YouTube, how about some other tabletop things? Again, with the weird segue. <laughs> it's the beginning of the year, and I feel like I'm really starting off strong. <laughs> I actually think we've got a pretty important topic this week, um, because we are two very major game systems and several others that aren't quite as big but have very rabid fan bases are getting ready to do addition changes right now. Uh, one that has captured probably the biggest amount of media attention is uh one D and D and okay. the other, which is coming up is uh, uh, the rumored, although it's pretty certain it's coming uh 10th edition of Warhammer 40 K. We also know that a Kickstarter for BattleTech will be coming in the spring of 2023 and and that's going to be for an updated edition, and uh, of the and tabletop then, game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then of course we've got a new, a whole new game, in the vein of Marvel Crisis Protocol coming out for Star Wars, which uh, is similar, to, a little bit larger scale than their Legion game. And a lot of players are worried that Legion is going to suffer when this new game comes out. So the question today is addition creep. What do you do when your favorite game decides it's time to number up and, uh, and make some core game changes? We've gone through this a few times, a few times with a few yeah. different systems. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts and opinions on addition changes and, and all of that. Well, I think the, as far as whether or not to adopt the new edition, 
comes down to the community decision. If you are playing with a group and everybody wants to try the new edition, then you switch to the new edition. But if you're in the middle of a campaign, you're not going to, well, I say you're not going to, we chose not to switch from edition 3.5 to 4 because we were in the middle of a campaign. And by the time 5th edition came out, we had just finished our 3.5 campaign. So we thought, okay, well now would be a reasonable time to switch to the new edition. So we completely hmm. missed 4th edition D&D. That is not how I remember that. <clears throat> okay, what do you yeah. remember? I remember us uh, reading the fourth edition rule set and going, this is crap. I don't want to play this. <laughs> I don't want to spend I, money on the books. <laughs> I did not read that. Oh, really? Maybe, oh, okay. Maybe you and somebody else. I hey, I did not know anything about the fourth edition. Okay. I so, was, yeah. So, I know Scott, old man Scott mm -hmm. uh, of Mech Warrior Robot Jocks fame, uh, if you're watching those episodes, <laughs> he did not like the way fourth edition looked. It, it was too video gamey for him. And yeah. it was, and that is, that was the, the, the style of fourth edition. It was very much like a video game because they were trying to capture those players. Cause the biggest thing I remember about fourth was exactly what you talked about was that that Scott had read the rules I had checked them out a little bit I didn't go into I didn't go very deep into them because I had already heard Scott say I don't know that I like this and for a long time Scott was kind of our bellwether about whether or not we play a game I feel like he was always the one who was most excited <laughs> about them you know what I mean yeah yeah because I know I wouldn't have played GURPS if uh if he hadn't mm -hmm. insisted um I was really I've never into heard of it. Exactly. Yeah. It was one of those games that, that only hardcore gamers knew. Like, I really wanted to play the Marvel superheroes role-playing game from the 80s, but only because I liked Marvel superheroes. I didn't like the system at all. It was terrible. Oh, dear. Well, I didn't understand it. I was also, you know, 12 years old. Um, <laughs> but I remember seeing the fourth edition books and everything and just being like, also, the the art style changed. So we went from AD and D, which was very eighties side of a van, airbrushed heroes and stuff like that, and then we went into three point five, which was a deviation a little bit. It was a little bit they add some some lesser fantasy, a little bit more like uh, oh, I don't want to say steampunk because that's not true, but there were. There, were, there, there was a style change. There was a style for change, certain. yeah. Yeah, the, the, the art portrayed a, a very different fashion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I, don't, I know what you mean by not wanting to use the word steampunk, but... It was straps. That, there were so vibe. many straps. Straps and buckles, man. Straps and buckles for days. <laughs> straps and, and goggles. So many goggles. Yes. yes. So it, it had an aesthetic to it. Um, yeah. One thing I did like was that it wasn't just a bunch of uh, white bearded guys anymore. Like they really mm -hmm. opened up, a, like what it looked like to be an adventurer in in the world of D and D. I really liked that a lot. But the clothing that that was, I didn't mind three and three point five. But by the time it got to fourth, I was like, what, what is this? And I see a lot of that influence of those costume choices in things like uh uh things like the critical role cartoon and and stuff like that on netflix i feel like a lot of that art style was defined by what got started in fourth edition it's on amazon but oh but, yeah, but yes yeah 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 you know what i'm talking about you know yes. what i'm talking about i know i just didn't want a bunch of comments on the video saying you're an idiot it's on amazon but if you really feel like it that's okay you go ahead and flame me i want the engagement 
So uh, thumbs down. So yeah, but then we got to five, and I remember one of the things that was attractive to me for five was that the system got streamlined a lot. Right. I did not mind the crunch of three and three point five. I really got used to feats. I really like spell points. Yeah. Um, it did I feel like to that. Yeah. And I think that's why Pathfinder remained so popular. It was like three point three extra. Like it, it just continued that trend. And for it, a long it time, it was the response to the displeasure of fourth edition. Right. And then, and then this other company went, "Oh, we we can make a game." Yeah. Well, they were allowed because under the D twenty game license, you were allowed to use the D twenty system. Mm-hmm. So they were able to just use the D20 system. So it worked out really well. Um, but yeah, with 5th, because it was streamlined and it was focused on telling story, that just seemed to really mesh with, right. especially where my head was at. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it worked for all of us. And that, and I think we've been playing that. Well, we have been playing that since it came out. Right. Yeah, we well, were early adopters, I think, of 5th yeah. of edition. We were early, early. Uh, even if we did have a little bit of addition issue uh, when there are still times when I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Where it'll be like, do I take a five foot step? Is that free? (laughs) Yeah. The whole attack of opportunity thing. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Five foot steps, all that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, (laughs) small, small concerns. Do you have any, um, prejudgments on one D and D. I know so very little about one D and D that my answer to that is no. Mm. Mm. I have no judgments whatsoever. I don't know anything about it. I am signed up as a play tester and have checked out mm. some of the things that are available in the, in the play. I haven't checked out everything. Um, I'll admit when I saw what was in it, I was like, Oh, you kind of need your group to be able to try this stuff out. Mm. So a lot of what I'm doing is just kind of trying to conceptualize how these things will work when they're actually being played in game. Mm-hmm. And it feels like it feels similar to in my mind. And honestly, in the comments, if you've got different opinions, especially if you've had a chance to try some of these things out, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um It feels like that three to 3.5 transition where some of the things got ironed out it's not like it's a massive addition change or a massive rule shift. It's more of a, uh, we're applying all the FAQs and errata. And like we reworded a couple things, but it's essentially what you've been playing. So I don't know how much of a difference it's going to be. Well, they've changed the rules of critical hits mm-hmm. now and critical failures. That's, I know that much, but right. But again, I'm it wondering feels how. Like like a sanding and not a re-chiseling, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, between third and fourth and fourth to fifth, those were all just tore it down and rebuilt it from from the, the ground up. I mean, yeah. fourth, you had the encounter, specific encounter abilities and turn abilities and yeah. it, like, all that stuff. And they, it was like it was like you had a deck of cards – that you you could play, yeah. which was very video gamey. I mean, and now that's gone now. So I don't know if if any of that would ever make a, a comeback or not. I feel like that was so universally railed against by the player base that that's why they went to fifth edition and made it so different from fourth. Yeah. Yeah, but never underestimate an American-based corporation's uh belief in the ability to make profit, especially especially on little things. Especially mm-hmm. on little things. And my I do see a lot of big concerns with 1D&D being like how bad are the microtransactions going to be? How bad yeah. is the beyond subscription going to be how segmented is it going to be what are you going to be able to get how much are legacy subscribers going to be able to keep like what what what's going to happen with that 
as much as I was really excited last week about the VTT, I I do wonder if it's going to be worth like maybe the VTT is as as a platform is free, but you've got to nickel and dime yourself into oh now I'm buying all my virtual miniatures, and uh, right or if you want to if you want the uh, the built in rule set for the bard, mm-hmm. then you you pay twenty bucks for that but if you're going to switch to a fighter class you don't That's have that 20 bucks you don't yep. have that expansion installed so the game doesn't know what to do so you've yeah. got to install that that can i think i feel like character class expansions are going to be a thing that's what i'm afraid of or maybe you get or the racial. general ones like for free like what's in the player's handbook you get for free but then subclasses are all the rage right now right Right, yeah. or you've got like you can you can be uh, most of the classes have you play f- up to like three levels. I, I can't even remember, but you play three levels as just a generic thing. But then once you hit the next level, you can specialize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I know with my monk, that's that's about when I choose. Maybe it was fifth at fifth level, but then you choose what your your monastery is and the path that, that your your person takes. So if you want that, that's when you got to pay the extra extra bit. Yeah. Discord miniatures installed into your one D and D that's the kind of stuff I'm worried about. Yeah. But you're not the only one. I feel like people are going to pay it because they want to try out the new thing, the new hotness and, it's just the company's going to go, oh, OK, well, apparently everybody liked this. So we're going to keep doing it that way. And that's going to become the new model for business for the game. And everyone's going to be pissed off about it, but they're going to keep doing it. They're going to they're going to pay the money because they want to be a part of the thing. But they're going to whine about it for 20 years. Tell me you've been abused by Games Workshop's business model without telling me you've been abused by Games Workshop's business model. That's I'm what thinking, I just heard. That's what I'm I just thinking heard more. Of, I'm thinking more video games. Video games. Uh, it's yeah, the same, I, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But uh, uh, Discourse Miniatures, who herself is a bit of a uh, uh, controversial figure in, in the YouTube discourse, really laid out that nightmare scenario on a video the other day where she straight up presented this is the darkest timeline that you're paying for every (laughs) little thing if you want the miniature and then the clothes that go with the miniature and the special weapon add-on for the miniature and plus you need the subclass or and just like you said after third level when you pick your college or your school or your style you've got to pay for the bit like that I do you want do you want your your virtual minis magic sword to glow blue? Mm-hmm. Pay ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. How about a green glowing sword? That's ninety nine cents, and if people are going to pay it. Of course, they're going to pay it because they I want don't the know thing. if they will. Yes, I think there there it certainly is, and this becomes a generational divide because the conversation, and this is something that comes up with Web three, and I know this sounds like it's not related, but it's totally one hundred percent related. So the idea of being able to buy something virtually to people of a certain vintage, especially over 35, doesn't make a lot of sense. Because we grew up actually owning things, DVDs, CDs, books, toys, all this stuff was physical, it was a representation, a totem of the thing that we loved in our hands. But a lot of younger people have grown up with streaming, whether that be video or audio. Um, they grew up on video games as opposed to board games, and they are used to the ephemeralness of of what it is. That not to talk about NFTs because I think that's a totally different thing. But the, these 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 are the younger folks are the ones that are ready to pay for a cosmetic alteration or a skin or something like that. 
And I think you're right. There certainly is a segment of gamer that will be willing to participate in that. But I think that what's going to come down to being the breaking point is how much you feel like you're getting bent over a barrel. <laughs> is it, does it, can, can I rationalize the 99 cents for this skin pack? Or is it, are you telling me to get the barbarian skin? I've got to pay a buck 45 and then it only works in this game. Yeah, no, to hell with that. Never mind. I'm, I'm calling up Reaper and I'm getting my miniature back. <laughs> And a lot of this too, there are so many segments of the of the RPG hobby, especially for D&D, when it comes to like miniatures and scenery and setup and stuff like that, that with 3D printing happening now, there just might be a whole thing where they're like, you know what, I just made an STL based on the thing that you're trying to sell me, so uh, I'm going to hand that out for free over here on this on this back Reddit page. So what's up? You're you're out your yeah. thirty bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I know that's a concern for a lot of of tabletop war games right now. Is what is the future of three D printing in in our business model? So I don't know. I think I think in the end we're speculating as much as everybody else is speculating, and and the idea of the worst timeline is definitely front of mind because we've seen it happen with the video games. And every other entertainment property and uh, mm -hmm. uh, business model in history. And it was just a matter of time <laughs> before things that were traditionally played with a piece of paper and a pencil uh, got caught up in that. But <laughs> yeah, actually, you uh, you teased me about telling me that Games Workshop hurt you without telling me that. Uh, the first time I ever remember a board game having expansion packs was talisman mm -hmm. you could get the normal box set but then if you wanted the the forest or the city or the dragon tower or all of these extra then you, you had to pay for a whole extra box of stuff mm -hmm. and yeah they came with some new characters that you could that you could play but that's the first time I ever really really remember you know like but Games like classic games like Monopoly and Risk, and I don't remember those ever having expansion packs. No, no, it's and definitely it's, it's definitely a, a, a. It's just gotten worse from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the idea of to talk about D and D and Warhammer specifically, D and D is in the business of selling books, right? And they always want you to buy those core three, no matter what. They want you to get the player's handbook, the DM's guide, and the monster manual. Always. That's a biggest seller. They know that they've got, what, 50 million players worldwide. We could sell 150 million books if we come out with the new version of those. Yeah. So let's get those. And, and at $50 a piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then, you know, for fit, we've always been pretty pretty book light as far as extra purchases we've made i feel like we've always been pretty frugal when it comes to D and D. especially can never say that about games workshop games but for D and D especially yeah, look over your uh your shoulder there buddy and tell me how frugal you are with book purchases <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing these are just the books that are applicable to the games i'm currently playing this isn't even, uh -huh. I've got an entire library there and oh, yeah. there and here. Yeah, it's, uh, so yeah. But I when it comes to. my D&D &D 3. I know, I can see books. them. I can see them in your, in your window. Although that might be no. trimmed. No? No, you're not. I don't have What are the red books? Those? The red spine, yeah. These? Yeah. Those, that's the Witcher novel series. Oh. That's not D&D, &D, Dan. No, it's not. No, it's not. Maybe inspired by. Yeah. Maybe. But we've always, I don't think we ever really bought a lot of extra books. I mean, in AD&D, &D, when we were playing Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, I remember getting the cleric book and, like, mm -hmm. some adventures. But it wasn't, like, the the libraries of books that are available now. I mean, I go into a game shop 
and see the D and D section is like three shelves deep with 30 books on each shelf. And yeah. The, yeah. And that's not even, that's not even people who are using the OGL to create their own content. That's specifically wizards of the coast exclusive books. Actually mentioning that that's another thing that's come up with D and D one. There was a whole lot of concern about what the new, uh, uh, game license would be with one D and D. And there were big concerns that they were just going to be like, you can't make anything else, which ended up being the torpedo that sunk fourth edition's boat completely was that third party people were not able to make content for it. So they didn't. Oh. So wizards of the coast was stuck making their own. And everybody was like, uh, <laughs> I don't feel connected to it. So I don't really want to do anything. Right. With it. Yeah. They reverted back to the old OGL, uh, for 5e and we saw how expansive that made it i mean we have critical role because of it we have uh 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 multiple there are so many shows <laughs> that use 5e as their base for being able to tell stories um the new ogl was released and <clears throat> admittedly it's not as loose as the old one used to be now if you're going to make product, they want to know that you're making it. And then they want to know what your sales numbers are. And if you make $750,000 or more on it per year, they would like you to pay a royalty. Which, I mean, personally, I don't see a problem with that. If you're making nearly a million dollars a year on a PDF you make for D&D, paying into the system that you're using as the base for that doesn't seem awful. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rates don't look insane. They look pretty reasonable. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a cash grab as much as it feels like guys, we've, we've literally let some of you make a fortune on this stuff. <laughs> and now that it's as big as it is, we literally just can't leave this money on the table. And they don't even care about you if you make less than $50,000 a year. So you just got to be able to be like, I want to make this. Sign the license. Yeah. I agree to this. So it doesn't feel like the totalitarian hammer and anvil that, uh, that people were worried about. And I think if one D&D &D continues in that direction, where it's reasonable, but permissive, then I could see it working. But if, but everybody seems to have such like negative ideas about how this is going to go. Okay. So day one of release, what are you doing? Nothing. You slapping your money down or no. are you playing a wait and see or I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not an early adopter on this. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Because I don't think day one is going to have everything that I want working. Yeah, well, that yeah. that is the case with many, many products these days, yeah. unfortunately, including video games. Yeah. So, so what I'll are, do is so I'll... many are released un, unfinished, and yeah. developers finish them and release patches over time. I'll give it at least six months after day one yeah. before before I experiment at all. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how our game group responds as news of the product is released. If it if it excites us enough that we want to adopt it early or if it's like what happened with fourth edition where we go yeah i don't know we've already uh we're already into fifth edition we've got all the books we need and we like the system and well most of us and uh you know we'll just stick with fifth edition and you know whatever with this other thing yeah which i can see that good. happening yeah. That's why you have that's why you have the books because now you can play that game forever. It's not there's nothing preventing you from play continuing to play the previous edition, which I think is such a a strange reaction from people who get angry when a, their favorite game comes out with a new edition. Mm. Although part of me understands there's the FOMO they want to be a part of the new era of this game they like, but it's also a huge chunk out of their pocketbook. So you could still play that old edition, though. 
I am also an advocate for that. I think the biggest, pl I think the most notable system that, that manages to defeat that reasoning is Games Workshop main games, AOS, uh, Age of Sigmar, and 40K. Because they don't just change editions. They're patching and spackling the rule set all through the edition. And right. then by the end of that edition, it is such a mess. It's so unwieldy. With codex that, creep yeah. and, and book creep. And not only that, but they're producing new toys every quarter or every month or every week. And if I wanted to go back and play 4th edition uh, uh, Warhammer 40k, could I? Yes. I've got all the materials. But I wouldn't be able to use cool new things like Primaris Marines or the Le or the Rogaldorn battle tank or even older stuff like the Valkyrie for my Astra Militarum. Like there are no rules for later created models yeah. in those older editions that you may have liked better. Yeah. And I think that's where Games Workshop really gets you. <laughs> really get you because i can still yeah. play cyberpunk 2020 i can still play the old version of gerbs we can we can go back and play D, &D 3.5 with no issues no issues but games workshop found a way to convince people that if it isn't supported it shouldn't be played and i think one of the only games that's managed to escape that is Mordheim. Mordheim only ever had one edition. Sure, there was errata and FAQs and, and later, like, expansion material. But Mordheim is the only game that I know of that has not changed at all. Literally only has one edition. Not like Epic or Space Marine or Necromunda or anything else. Even Kill Team is on its second edition. Fourth, if you really want to get technical about it right okay um and yeah and mordheim is the only one that still has a like a big active playing community where if i wanted to set up a mordheim league here in portland i could i could yeah. i would just need to make sure they knew it was happening and then people would show yeah i can't do that with inquisitor the 54 millimeter uh tabletop war game which i love that's not a community that really exists anymore. Mm -hmm. Inquisitor 28, where they play with the 28 millimeter figs, does. But I've got big figs. I would like to get those minis on the table again. <laughs> and nobody else plays that game. Necromunda advanced into its newest edition. So nobody's playing the 1998 Necromunda anymore. And it's, yeah... It's it's weird how Games Workshop managed to find a way to be like, if the game isn't supported, it's not worth you playing. And I don't feel that way with any other game. Even people will play old versions of TIE Fighter. Or not TIE Fighter, X-Wing. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and, and there are newer but, editions of that. But if you have the materials required to play like you were just referencing fourth edition Warhammer, you can still play it if you've got your fourth edition minis. Sure, it's just but any, what if I want to use something new? Then it hadn't, that particular model of tank had not been developed yet by the Manufactorum. But it, but it takes away then the fact that I want to use it then your game of 4th edition Warhammer 40k takes place before, <laughs> centuries before, the, whatever the new The new vehicle, yeah. Yeah, whatever that new vehicle is, it hasn't even been developed yet. Yeah. Or you're playing in a, a sector of space that is so remote that delivery of that vehicle is not possible 
I mean, Dan, I totally get what you're saying. You know, and I don't disagree with you. You could just create a narrative. You gotta play the narrative. To explain the absence of all of your new mini. <laughs> but it isn't the it isn't that isn't the culture that Games Workshop has created. Yeah. They've created they've they've created this culture where it's here's the new stuff. You want the new stuff, yeah. play with the new stuff, mm-hmm. we'll support the the rules always exist sure. to support the minis as opposed to the minis being there to play a game. So I'm <laughs> part of the reason I like Kill Team so much is because they seem to leave it alone. We get like extra additions, but it's still that base core rule book hasn't changed. You have a contrary opinion. But I don't. Well, I mean, I didn't play Kill Team 2018, so oh, I don't that know was a mess. what that is compared to Kill Team 2021, which it was 40k I have light. Played. It was 40k. So, light. but I. But what if what if you got started on Kill Team 18 and you really like it and you can't play that now because so they actually did change it. you can because everything was in that core book, everything army lists and everything. You could play you could play Kill Team 18 out of that book. It's just that Kill really? Team 21 so, ended up being a much better system. So the um the there's nothing in Kill Team 21 vehicles or characters or anything like that that wasn't in Kill Team 18. If I bought the Octarius box set and I've got these characters, mm-hmm. those exist in Kill Team 18. In a different form, but yes. Feel, we had specialties. I feel like we had specialties not... in Kill Team 2018. Uh-huh. So instead of roles like <laughs> sniper and stuff like that, I mean that that existed. Um, there were some some more specific things. So if anything, the new kill teams that are being created for 2021 actually have the features that we had to kit bash in 2018 in the 2018 version. Okay. Yeah. So there's no there's no faction in Kill Team 2021 that did not exist in Kill Team 2018. I was going to say the the uh Navy Breachers, mm-hmm. but they do exist as voidsmen. Words. They do exist as voidsmen in uh in in the 2018 book they had different options Mm -hmm. i'm just the the point i'm making is i feel like you said kill team hasn't changed i think i'm sorry i think it has i think there are i mean i mean that kill team 2021 hasn't changed from its core we haven't gotten a new a new thing for that yet other than some expansions some expansions like every quarter there's a new a new thing yeah but you don't have to play with that you you do if the you're at the game store and the the dude across the table from you has that and that's the game mission but, type that he wants to play that he's going to have it and the rules updates aren't crazy okay i see what you're saying i'm not going to fight you on this because <laughs> because i don't disagree with you i don't disagree with you um and it is not a one to one more time to kill team 21 <laughs> But I do feel like it's getting less tinker than uh, than other games. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's that's what we think. Um, what do you think? What are your thoughts on game editions? Yeah. What do you got? What do you got, Dan? What do you got? Uh, nothing. Nothing Just for real. Leave, leave a comment. No, I'm yeah. done. We're just gonna belabor the point. Beat the dead horse. It is. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then get really too specific about. Anyway, <laughs> you have to cut half this anyway. <laughs> other tabletop things. <laughs> that was such a sad little segue out. It's other tabletop I've things. I've got I've got new things. <laughs> okay. While we're in this depressed state, we should probably talk about what we're hyped about.
pull ourselves out of the pit. Pull ourselves out. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. Oh man, uh, Dan, please go first. Please tell me what you're hyped about. Oh, kill, kill my funk with your magic. Oh, are you are you feeling funky? Well, I got I've got one thing that I'm, I want to I want to show first. Oh, great! It's Do a you need thing. To... It's a thing that I'm hyped about. I know I'm not show I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, okay. Well, I am. Hold just on. Just a second. Let, Let me, me just make that happen. No, it's a different kind of screen. Oh, crap in a hat. It's a different kind of screen. Santa Santa was good to me this year. Oh, nice. Oh, hey. Oh, dude, that's awesome. I that's have a green awesome. screen now. <laughs> I have fantastic You can put all news. kinds of crap behind me I am going to put all <laughs> kinds of crap behind you. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, Michelle got me this for... For, for Christmas. So That's it was, fantastic. It was, it was kind of my Red Rider BB gun because it was like way off in the corner and like we'd already opened presents and everything. And she was like, oh, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> That's very, you know, I like that, Michelle. So you got yourself a good one. Yeah. So I yeah. think the first the first use that I'm going to make of this, I think, is with our Mech Warrior series. I would like to drop cockpit. this out and be I'm in a cockpit. Yes, nice. I'm having a hard time finding art though, because it's just all, all the views, cockpit views, are from the seat out the window. Right. I want, I want. You need in. cockpit interior. Yes, that's what I need. So, so if um, any of you are artists out there and want to get a digital cockpit interior for Old Man Dan, please let us know. Uh, you can reach out on Instagram at the link below, or uh, or here on the Use of Tubes. Or comment. Yeah. This is the newer, N-E-E-W-E-R, green screen pull-up. And it is so it is so simple to use. Dude, it's, it looks great. It's, the, it's a, a tube, and it's got little feet so it doesn't fall over. You just, like, flip the feet out. Nice. And, but you just pushed it. Put, when I'm done with it, I just push it down. And it's done. And that's it. That's and then great. I, you know, I just close the lid on the, on the case, and it's all... Well done. That's fantastic. Although it's probably not going to move from that spot much, is it? Oh yes, it is. I mean, oh I mean, really? It's, it's in the way. It's oh, right. Oh, it's right oh. in the middle of the carpet. So oh. I'm 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 going to latch it up and toss it Put in the it corner in the when I'm not when I'm not <laughs> using it. But but otherwise, it is so simple to set up. Nice, nice. You just grab the handle, pull it up, and then when you're done, you just push it back down. It is so simple. So I'm really looking forward to playing with it. I can't wait to see the cockpit interior on Mech Warrior Mondays. And yeah. uh, also, uh, can't wait to uh, screw around with uh, your introduction moment there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will let them see that it's a green screen, and then we'll see what I decide to put back there. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Uh, so the thing, though, that I have been... I guess watching, we've talked a lot of a lot of TV and, and film stuff, mm -hmm. is I'm a big fan of The Witcher, and I've played all three of the games. Uh, I have, as you saw, as you pointed out uh, earlier, those red spined books that you thought were D and D related. No, right. those are those are that's the. I think I'm missing a couple, but uh, that's the whole Witcher novel series. I also have, ooh, my my cord stretch. <laughs> Does it, can i get there okay i also have this oh the world wow. of the witcher this is a compendium for the um the video game that's so it's cool. just like a history of the game world and monster types and also so I'm, i just i'm a big fan of of the witcher uh but so all this to say, I'm excited that the Blood Origin prequel uh, limited series is out now. I've watched the first two episodes. I really like them. There nice. is a <laughs> there's a character. Hmm, okay, how do I? The story <laughs> is okay. How do I do this best? 
How do I set this up? No spoilers. How do I set this up? Oh yeah, no, no spoilers. So the beginning of the series introduces two characters, one of whom you already know if you've watched the the Henry Cavill series. Okay. But the show is one character telling the other character a story. Okay. That takes you back a thousand years or so into this story that she is telling him. And uh, so there, that explains the narration every now and then when, when she pops in and says, and so they crossed the river and went through the forest and blah, blah, blah. That makes that stuff make sense. Okay. And right. also the uh, the budget is seems a lot smaller than with the first two seasons of the Henry Cavill led show. I have been led to Not... believe that it's similar to uh, a little bit higher level than Xena Warrior Princess. I never watched that, so I don't know that I can't reference that. But would you would you say it's on par or a little bit higher than Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I also never watched Buffy the Vampire. I can't answer your You're questions. You're taking away Curtis. my pop culture reference points here. I can't answer your questions. It's it doesn't look bad most of the time. Okay. Every now and then there's a a, a shot with a matte painting or something that's really obviously a matte painting because there's nothing moving back there and they're just they're just way too close to it like you could if they wave their hand you would see the shadow of their hand on the matte painting or right something. <laughs> there are birds that are just stuck in very, flight. very brief and i think i'm saying i've only seen that once throughout the first two episodes that i've watched two of four i think that that are out right now and it was enough for me to go oh but it didn't <laughs> But that was it. It didn't take me out of it or anything. There are some scenes where the there's no background. They 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 darken the entire scene and only light the characters. Okay. So you are filling in what's happening around with your own imagination. Mm. And I feel like that is that works for the frame of the show being a tale that someone is telling another person. Right. And so when you tell a story, you don't always explain everything. Right. That the characters in the story see or hear or smell. So sometimes those absences or, or diminished production quality maybe <laughs> would explain because that storyteller is not going into detail on that particular that's my head canon that's how i'm hey that's how i'm watching the narrative and for me that's that's really helped but the i i really enjoy the story it is very much a classic fantasy D and D style, gather the party and go off and do the quest. Nice. And nice. the I I like all of the characters so far that are involved. There is a a badass dwarf character who I've is, seen her in the previews. She who is cool. actually actually a little person playing her, and she's really good. And she has this warhammer that she carries around named Gwen. And she talks to Gwen, and uh, it's, I love her character so far. I've only she's only been in one episode so far, but I uh, she's fun. I'm looking forward to seeing more of her as as the party uh, uh, forms and they go off and cause trouble. So nice. uh, it, the Witcher Blood Origin it's on Netflix. It just released like what this week, last week, uh, brand mm -hmm. new, brand new. So if you are a fan of The Witcher, you'll probably like it. Um, just keep what I said in mind about it being a story someone's telling somebody else. And so they don't always uh, paint the full picture. And eh, I think that might help. That might help you forgive, <laughs> forgive the lower budget because really it's a reasonable, it is a reasonable way to think about it. It is. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke here. This is, 
if you watch it with that frame of mind, you'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, Dan is totally right about everything all the time, especially this. Okay. Wow. All Has- right. That- hashtag is that going to fit in the bottom of the screen? Dan, Dan hashtag is Dan is totally in- right about everything all the time, especially this. I mean, it's going to yeah. be there. Wrap we'll it around. It yeah. It'll wrap. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's so that's what, I've, that's what I've been hyped about. I think as soon as we uh, click stop on our recording, I'm going to go watch episode three. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, that's cool, yeah. dude. That's yeah. good. That's what about good. you? What are you hyped about this week? Um, so normally I make notes on the thing that I am hyped about for this week. And when I opened up those notes, I saw that it was blank. Because um, you, they didn't save or you just forgot to be, be hyped about something? <laughs> I forgot to be hyped about something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hey, you survived Ice Apocalypse 2022. That's I something did. to be hyped about. I did. Um, there are a few things that have had me like excited this week. Uh, okay. Renee and I watched a couple of different Scandinavian series made by the same person, um, uh, all about hating Christmas. <laughs> and they're very Scandinavian. They're. Uh, um, Honey? What does yeah. that mean? So, They're very Scandinavian. Explain that. Very nihilistic, very blunt about uh, feelings, uh, and um, uh, like everything's cold. Everything's cold and nice. Um, so it's just they were really good. They featured a lot of the same cast, so we really enjoyed that. Um, we watched Glass Onion over the holidays okay. and. I really love that. I'm a Ryan Johnson fan. Uh, uh, I love The Last Jedi. Don't at me. And, uh, <laughs> or do. I want the I want the engagement. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah that's Thumbs fine. down. That's why. Come for me. Come Thumbs down. get it. Yeah. Leave a comment, especially. Tell me all the reasons why you're a sad boy. Um, but. Uh, oh, I will. I will yeah. do that, Curtis. <laughs> Please. Uh, but. Uh, uh, there have been a lot of things to be excited about this week. There have been a lot of things. And I'm having a problem trying to grab that one that stood out that was like, this is the thing that you should talk about that you were so excited about. The Bad Batch starts next week. I'm hyped for that. I'm ready right. for that. That's the second season, right? Yes. Maybe third? God, I don't know. I've lost okay. track. I knew there there already has been some out, so I, you know, I'm behind. I, I haven't watched the Bad Batch yet. It's really good. I haven't even gotten. I haven't finished Andor yet. Oh, Andor is better. Focus on Andor. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but when it comes down to what is that thing, that one thing that you're hyped about. I think I think I'm really excited to get the BattleTech box. Oh, yeah! You slapped because down American currency for the BattleTech box. I put American dollars into the Amazon machine because uh-huh. uh, I had uh, gift cards. And oh, you did? Okay, I All did. Right. Good, good. So it was not only on sale, but it was a low risk. Yeah, and. And that will be here real soon. Maybe it's on your doorstep right now, and that's why Arlo was freaking out earlier. You know, I checked. Your and postal it's not. worker was <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It's due. It's due like tomorrow. Okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, one of the th- something that came up during MechWarrior Monday last week was the fact that BattleTech originally, when it was released had the license to a variety of Japanese mech models, including oh. Fang of the Sun Dug Ram, all of the Macross mechs, which eventually became uh, Robotech, and just a whole bunch of different uh, mech styles that were in 70s and early 80s Japanese animation. And when I was a kid in the early 1980s, I got a Doug Ram that was like part model kit, part action figure. And that got me to love 
giant robots fighting each other <laughs> forever. It okay. was, that was the thing that did it to the point where I lost that toy. Oh God. must've been like 86, 87. Oh. And so when eBay became a thing, the first thing I did was look for it. Now I'll tell you with adult eyes, still cool. Not as cool as I remember. So yeah. I didn't end up buying it because I was going to be spending collector money on something that I didn't want to spend collector money on. <laughs> but the the Shadowhawk mech is based on the Doug Ram H8 battle armor. Okay. And for a long time, they changed nothing. The Shadowhawk has been updated for this rule set. So it's just a little different, but it's still very recognizable. Mm -hmm. And my other favorite mech model ever in history is the Zentradi command pod from Macross and Robotech. Okay. Just love the little pod with the big gun on its head and the two <laughs> arm guns and its little chicken legs. <laughs> That's called a Marauder in Battletech. Okay. And so I got the, I got the box and I got the Lance box that comes with the Marauder. So I'm going to oh. have my two favorite mechs in addition to Having this new game that I think is going to be pretty neat, I'm also going to have two of my childhood favorite mechs ready ready to go. And so... You're going to paint them up? I am. Yeah. 100%. Cool. Personal heraldry. We're going yeah. to put all kinds of cool stuff on that. Are you going to paint them all as one lance or like similar paint scheme style type thing? Or are you going to do I each one different? I don't know. I think I need to read a little bit more lore. To really understand hmm. because i think there's part of me that wants to be like individual pilots get to pick their colors but then we've got badges and markings that'll like lance them out hmm but i don't know i really got to get more down with the battle tech lore and apparently that is a rabbit hole if you've been oh participating in our live conversations on mech warrior mondays you know, we've got some hardcore Battletech yeah. and Mech Warrior fans who have kind of given us just a glimpse into the rabbit hole that we might be falling into here. <laughs> They're very knowledgeable and, yeah. and very open to sharing what they know and their thoughts on optimal strategies. No it's yeah. It's been really fun to, to see and to participate in, to be a part of. It's it's almost like a little community that's forming here of, of yeah. folks that show up on Monday mornings and chat with us while we <laughs> while we air our new Mech Warrior episode. So yeah, cool. we really so, appreciate you. Please keep coming back. Please mm -hmm. keep chatting because especially for me as a fluff junkie, whew, that's that's pretty educational. Yeah. Like it's good for y'all because they're like, hey, seriously, get rid of the jump jets and put some more armor on that. Right. Uh but uh but just being able to ask them questions and having everybody respond so quickly and so thoroughly has been really nice. Yeah. It's been really nice. I haven't read of any of the official lore from Battletech yet, and I feel like I know more than I should just because people have explained stuff to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. apparently there's a robust wiki that I'm afraid to even start because that will be... That will be my 2023 Goodreads reading challenge, just to read the entirety <laughs> of the <laughs> that wiki. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's I, stuff I yeah. want to know. I'm just afraid I'm going to confuse it with Warhammer, which all, or Warhammer 40,000, which also has a massive wealth of history and story. When I was first getting into Warhammer, I was already really into Star Wars. And the crossover that happened, because I was reading Star Wars novels while yeah. I was reading uh, uh, Warhammer books, made it so that I was really, I was convinced that Vibroblades existed in Warhammer 40k. Oh. Convinced. <laughs> and couldn't understand why I couldn't find them anywhere. They do sound like something that would be it in would Warhammer and not Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, they are a Star Wars piece of equipment. And then there are alien races that I were I was convinced came out of Warhammer. And no, no, they were they were from uh, the Zon trilogy. Uh oh, uh, so yeah. <laughs> you had 
uh, you had franchise bleed from totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what, that's what I'm concerned about is that I will be completely confused by with my Warhammer 40k and my Star Wars and my BattleTech slash Mech Warrior stories and just be completely baffled. Well, one thing that I think we can take heart in is that uh, BattleTech doesn't treat their technology like a religion. So, not yet. That... <laughs> not yet. Well, I mean, let's let's think about this. So, BattleTech as far as I understand it so far is in the 31st century. Mhm. Warhammer I mean the the Horus Heresy was in the 31st or 32nd millennium. Yeah. And then the current storyline is the 41st millennium. We're talking 42nd now. They just crossed Oh, over. it's been it's okay. Happy they, New Year. Happy New yeah. Year. But wow, that so much time. You could potentially say that BattleTech took place in the early Warhammer days. Yeah, they absolutely. could be in the same in the same universe. But you know, history because the the imperium is just awful about record keeping well and the unification and wars destroyed a lot of exactly of, yeah exactly history. right and and so who's to say that that all of that didn't happen collectively in the same world hashtag head you know? i i think probably games workshop and fasa and catalyst they would probably all say like they would be against this but you know, when you want to play the narrative, we're going to play the narrative. Then that's that's what I'm doing. Not only that, but this is an extension of the medieval fantasy world that we play D and D in. So we got it all covered. Right, right. Yeah. And who's to say some warp gate doesn't open up and suddenly you're in Tamaria with this long-haired, yellow-eyed person who calls himself Geralt? And that's fair. That's fair. Don't know. I mean, every every story takes place in the same universe. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because there uh that would be fun. There used to, to be a history. crossover for Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40K. Huh. Yeah. And it was loosely it was always loosely connected like they would make allusions to oh and this strange thing to kind of explain why both mm -hmm. races like all the races existed in the same places. Right. Um and then there was and I'm pretty sure this was fan generated and not company generated, but there was a, there was this thing like Sigmar is one of the missing Primarchs. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, again, that's not real. That's just one of those things from years and years and years of lore. No, that's early. Something got leaked. Something <laughs> <laughs> Something got leaked, and now they're like, "No, that's not. Nah. That's not." But in the we next saw edition, squats come back. Who knows? Twenty twenty three, the new edition, tenth edition, Warhammer forty k. That's going to be revealed. And according to Chapter Master Valrak, uh, they're going to be bringing the Lionel Johnson back as a Primarch. Where do you think the Votan have been all this time? They've been at the center of the galaxy. They discovered Sigmar. Sigmar. Sig. Sigmar. Sigmar, yeah. 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 In his age of Sigmar. Right. Yeah. And now they have returned to bring forth a new age of Sigmar. And that will be the new edition. You heard it here first, folks. Tenth edition. Predictions. What do I get if I'm right? Uh, dude, if you're right, I, I swear right. I'll buy you the new edition. I'll buy it. <laughs> I will buy you the box set. <laughs> I will buy it. I will send it up. I will buy it here tax free and I will send uh -huh. it to you. Good yeah. good thing we have this recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so that you can't renege on that right. when it come when this all comes true. Oh man. Well, Dan, uh that's that's another week down. We knocked it out. We yeah. knocked it out. Tell us again what you think about uh about uh, edition creep and and new editions and things. Tell us what you're hyped about. Oh, you know what I just remembered? Uh-oh. We didn't set any goals for hobby completion next week. I mean, 
it's not New Year's for us yet. We're we're in that week between Christmas and New Year's where you just very recently admitted that nothing gets done. All right. Are you gonna right. are you gonna break that and set a goal for yourself and just to force some activity out of out of yourself? I am going to I am getting those shadow elves soon. So I am going to try and get as many of my guys finished that are on painting handles right now as possible before those shadow elves show you up. You got to clear your production space. Mhm. Mhm. So that's my plan. That's okay. my plan. Yeah. All right. You've got several television shows to catch up on though, including Blood Origin and Andor. That's true. Uh so I don't think I'm going to give myself any grander a goal other than just renewing last time. The I think last, that's fair. The last goal. Yeah. I don't want to okay. set myself up for failure right at the beginning of the new year. Because that'll just plan. that'll just set the stage for the next fifty two weeks and Nobody wants that. Nah, you don't you don't want to do that to yourself. Not at the beginning. No. Baby steps. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the show this week. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to watch things like Mech Warrior Monday and Vampire yeah. on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, possibly Saturday and Sunday. Dan is really working through that Thank story you. and things are getting hardcore. Dude, some stuff happened. Stuff it is happened for the rest of the week. Did you watch yeah. today's episode? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, all right. I did. It was stuff great. Is ha- stuff's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. if you were if you were sleeping on Vampire before, we've got to the good stuff. So now you can just plug in, <laughs> just watch some real ass kicking. Uh, of course, uh, of course, you'll see us on Tabletop Tuesday <laughs> and shorts yeah. that come out throughout the week. Uh, like us on the Instagrams and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh, thanks. Oh,